This is a story of Higham Ferrers, a beautiful little town in the county of Northamptonshire and its charters. Romans first settled here along the banks of the River Nen, and there is evidence of a Saxon settlement. Eventually, the town moved to where it is today, with a substantial castle, which now no longer exists. Among its many treasures is a magnificent church with a spire reaching 170 feet, nearly 52 meters. Next to this is the Chantry Chapel and Bede House, built by Henry Chicherley, the town's most famous son, who became the Archbishop of Canterbury. He was also responsible for building Chicherley College, a hidden gem which once housed monks, but is now a scheduled monument. Here among the ruins, thanks to Henry VIII, one building remains where many art and heritage exhibitions and events are held, including Santa's Grotto. Next to this is a peaceful medieval style garden that you can visit at any time. Higham Ferris has long been a special town and this is due to many charters that have made it a place of significance, giving us a rich history of which we can be very proud. What is the charter? It is an agreement between the Lord of the Manor and the people of the town. In 1251, William D. Ferris granted time its first charter. This charter is lost. For the people of Higham, their charter gave them their freedom. In 1250, most people were serfs who were very little better than slaves. As a result of the charter, those freed could now marry whoever they wanted. They could own possessions. They could leave the town to live somewhere else, and they could pass on the farms that they rented to their children. And they no longer had to work on Earl Ferris land when required. 91 citizens of Higham and their families were freed by the charter. Some of their names were Thomas the Cook, Ralph the Cobbler, Hugh at the Gate of the Church, Beatrice Kiss and Muriel Bones, this charter meant that Higham could keep law and order, elect a mayor, look after the watermill and bakehouse, and hold regular fairs and markets. As a result, Higham prospered. How many charters were there? The total number of charters is six. We have five because we lost one. In 1556 was the charter of Philip and Mary. We can now elect an MP, have a mayor and spend Henry Chichley's money. So we have four left. Who granted these? During the Stuart period, there were three charters granted to High, one by James I and the other two by Charles II. Between the second and third charters was the English Civil War between the Parliament and the King. The charter of James I was really the king saying, now that Queen Elizabeth is dead, I am your new Lord of the Manor, and all of Higham's rights and duties come from me. So follow this charter, do as you are told, and you will be safe and prosperous. He then made a few small changes and agreed all the rest of the rights and duties. And so, from 1604, Higham went on its way with its mayor and courts and councillors and market and feasts and its population of just over 1,000. The only excitement was in 1631 when the church spire fell down, but the town had rebuilt it within two years. After the war finished with the defeat of the king and his cavaliers at the Battle of Naseby in North Northamptonshire, King Charles was tried in court and beheaded in 1649, and for 11 years there was no king, as the country was ruled by Parliament and Oliver Cromwell. But when Cromwell died, Charles II was restored as King of England in 1660. And can you guess what was one of the first things he did in 1664? That's right, he gave Higham a new charter. 
1664 charter was, of course, Charles II saying, I am now your new lord of the manor, and all of Hyam's rights and duties come from me. And while we're about it, there will be a couple of changes made. And as for you, good people of Hyam, follow this new charter, do as you are told, and you will be safe and prosperous. And so there were some new rights. The Monday market would now be a Thursday market. At the Saturday market, the sale of horses and beast was allowed. This made it a much more important market. And two more fairs were to be allowed. His second charter of 1684 says much the same and gives Hyam a few more markets. This was in the reign of Queen Victoria in 1884. Up until the final charter, no two charters were the same. They were written individually for one town and were different from every other charter. The number of councillors was different, the markets were different, the fairs were different, and the arrangements for representation in Parliament were different. A modern, industrialised world needed all towns to have the same system, and this system being one that Parliament decides, and which all towns and boroughs must follow. What will our school like then? Our school has about 100 pupils, seven classrooms, a hall, a stage, and an office for the headmaster. Our teacher sits at a tall desk and is very strict. A bell is rung at the beginning of the day, and at uh, end of lessons. No one knows the time. Some of our class are half-time workers working in the shoe factories. Poor Jimmy got his hands stuck in the machine and lost all of his fingers. Where are our charters? Thanks to Heritage Lottery funding, they have been restored and kept safe. You can see them on a website and at the schools of High and Ferrers. Without the Earl of Derby, who had the imagination to grant the citizens of Higham Ferris their freedom, the town might have remained what it was then, a small farming village of about 300 people, with a small church, no college, no bead house, no market square, no town hall, only a road running through the middle of it on the way to somewhere more important, and not the Higham Ferris we know today.